Thiol, or CBD for short, is the second most prominent compound found in the cannabis plant. A lot of the medical benefits of cannabis that are attributed to THC or other cannabinoids are actually due to the CBD content of the cannabis. It has very strong anti-inflammatory properties. And not only does it help suppress inflammation, but there was a study that showed that it also helps the body to not make the chemical that causes inflammation. So it actually has somewhat of a preventive role. Cannabidiol has also been found to have anti-convulsant properties in that it can reduce the seizure threshold for a number of patients. I've had my own patients who have said that once they started using CBD-rich strains, they have found that they have had less um, episodes of their uh, seizures. CBD is synthesized in the plant through the same pathways as THC, CBC. It starts out as geronium pyrophosphate and alphotolic acid. Those two compounds join together through an enzyme catalyzed reaction. Canagibarellic acid, CBGA, is the starting material for CBDA, THCA, and CBCA. So CBDA synthase, if it's found in large enough amounts, will take this canagibarellic acid and make it into cannabidiol carboxylic acid, which is CBDA. CBDA is CBD with a carboxylic acid attached to it. Now, with heat or through time, this carboxylic acid will naturally release from the compound as it is very unstable and become CBD. Uh, this process right here where we lose this carboxylic acid happens at about 80 degrees Celsius. A number of studies were done where they actually gave patients an overdose of THC to see what would happen when they then added CBD. And CBD completely turned around the negative effects of an overdose of THC without changing the levels of THC in the blood. So that means that CBD exerts its own medicinal, just doesn't reverse THC, it actually has its own medicinal properties. CBD has been found to cause cancer cells to what we call commit suicide while preserving the normal cells. And what appears to happen is it appears to bind to the receptors on the cancer cells, which then induce the cancer cell to kill itself. Cannabidiol has also been found to be what we call biphasic in terms of sleep. So at low doses, it's what we call alerting. It kind of keeps you awake. At higher doses, it can be very sedating and cause you to sleep. But what's nice about that is you can control whether or not you are alert or you're feeling tired. When I started testing cannabis about two or three years ago, um, we saw virtually no high CBD plants. Almost every plant we tested was high in THC, anywhere from 10% to 20% THC with some outliers on either end. Some plants would have maybe 1% CBD at the max, 1.5% CBD at the max. Now that we've been testing for a while, we see anywhere from 8 to 15% CBD and maybe 5 or 6% THC in these strains. Some strains, we get a 50-50 ratio. It, it can happen in, in, in all different ratios, but what it is is it's a recessive gene in plants. So we have breeders have to actively go and try and breed this back into these plants and find these high THC plants that might have that high CBD gene locked away and, and breed them together and see what they find. And, and really the only way you can know if it's high CBDA is to test it. With testing and, 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 and growers or breeders having access to that knowledge base, we see them coming back and, and, and reversing some of the trends of the last 30, 40, 50 years and, and breeding the CBD back into the plants. Now there have been a number of studies that have looked at cannabidiol, CBD, uh, exerting a protective property to uh, damage neurons. And it appears that in the studies, CBD protects the nerves by inhibiting the process by which nerves are damaged. CBD has also been shown to protect against brain injury when patients or um, lab animals have had a brain injury, CBD appears to protect the brain from damage that occurred to the nerve cells. The studies have shown that it can actually fight MRSA, which is methicillin resistant Staph aureus, a uh, notorious bug that is resistant to a number of antibiotics. A topical application of uh, cannabis was able to fight the infection and the MRSA was eradicated from that uh, infection site. SC Labs tests for CBD with a high performance liquid chromatograph, also known as an HPLC. 
Uh, there's two different ways you can test for cannabinoids. It's either with an HPLC or with a GC. If you hear someone testing with other methods, it's probably not uh, a scientifically validated method. But with the problem with the GC is, is that the GC uses heat to test for these, these cannabinoids. And as I said earlier, all the acidic cannabinoids are very sensitive to heat. So the GC can give you no information about the acidic cannabinoids. It can only tell you about the non-acidic cannabinoids. The heat is decomposing these compounds. It's, it's definitely decarboxylating all of them. And you're trying to measure it as these compounds are in, are in a state of flux. And that's just, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of fuzzy. So we use the HPLC because it keeps the cannabinoids in their natural state. They're in their liquid state. There's no alteration. There's no heat or anything like that happening. And so we get a much more accurate and a much more realistic picture of what's actually in the sample that we're testing. One of the important things for people to understand about cannabidiol is it is not psychoactive. That means it does not change your mood, your mentation, um, the way that THC has psychoactive properties and can actually cause what we call the high. CBD does not do that. For patients who are not interested in the THC effect but are interested in the CBD effect, this is a terrific choice for them to have.